Hello, and welcome. Good day, and happy modding. Jumping right into it. Uh, just get, continuing the <clears throat> TR soundtrack background. Um, I don't know, I'm liking it. Gets me in the zone. So yeah. And uh, soundtrack. Can you hear me? Am I speaking to the void? My stuff looks okay, so I'm going to roll with it. Um, jumping right into it, 5.7 update from last week is kind of lingering. I had a, a bit of a busy week and was unable to finish it up last Sunday. So the merge request remains open, uh, pending review by Gonzo, who uh, is not joining us this weekend. They're out enjoying uh, some nature time, so Gonzo, you're missed. Um, Herdrax also not going to be joining us today. You will be missed, sir. Um, but yeah, uh, jumping right into it, we have a uh, feature request that came in. Um, I was actually a little bit taking a step back. I was a little busy yesterday and uh, released a couple of things on Nexus Mods. Things that have been cooking for a while, actually, um, in the case of this one right here, NC GD MW Lua Edition, um, it's been in beta for, I don't know, over a year now, 14 months even, um, and I thought, you know, it's ready, it's ready to go get the people's eyeballs on it outside of, of GitLab, um, so... So yeah, and then these ones are just other ones that I've been working on that will find their way onto the website in coming updates, but they just prevent uh, these distant fixes. I think I talked about them in previous streams, but uh, these distant fixes things will stop, you know, uh, things that get built over the course of a story event from, from being visible from the beginning. And then also that when they do become available through the story event that they'll pop up. Uh, I'm sorry, they will not pop up, and they'll be visible in the distance. Because um, the behavior right now, yeah, you, if you use Rise of House Tovani, you've undoubtedly seen the, you know... In fact, we could just do this right now as a demonstration, since I'm feeling like it. Let's see here. Okay, no, I don't actually have it configured. I tell you what. Let's go to distant fix it. We'll do it real quick, just because I want to demonstrate. Yeah, no, no. I'm questioning my own sanity here. All right, yeah. So we'll turn this off. And... We'll go to a run. Expanded boss. There we go. We don't need the curb music. At the moment, and j again, just a quick, um, just a quick look at the behavior out of the box. <laughs> if you don't kind of specially think about, you know, oh, what do I got to do for you know distant statics? What's going to happen for the innocent modder who had no idea about the concept of distant statics? You know, ten years ago or where, whenever Rise of House Tavani was made. Um, Oh, certainly before distant statics and OpenMW was a thing. That oily hand. There we go. Oh, finally loaded in. Expanded vanilla. Kind of drive away the point here. And I mean, yeah, you can just see, you know, without getting into it too much, this is kind of a, kind of a spoiler, but yeah, I mean, you can see the you know, this stuff. And so again, that's what these, uh, that's what these distant, this distant fixes series of things uh, was designed to do. And then, yeah, kind of uh, just love the abandoned flat. I think I talked about it last weekend, last weekend uh, during the streams and containers mod that uh, section uh, encouraged me to share. And so I did put it out there. Um, it, <laughs> struggled with the con the category to put it under on Nexus and I thought well cheats and god items because I mean it's like a million pounds weight container 
capacity, something obscenely large, OpenMWCS would allow me to do. And then, yeah, the um, drain item types from your inventory activators that are in there. I didn't want to show too much during the stream because there's a little bit of a spoiler of the abandoned flat mod itself, which, uh, you know, kind of excited to see the reception on it. Like, wow, oh, you know, 16 downloads in like 12 hours. That's pretty cool. People care about the classic mod restorations. So I really appreciate that. But yeah, going so going back to what I was showing initially, Random Pal was kind enough to hop on to my issue tracker and submit a feature request. Magicka-based skill progression. And, uh, you know, as I, as I responded to Random Pal, that's something that's been on my mind from day one of being able to hack on uh, Natural Character Growth and Decay Lua Edition, you know. Um, but I wasn't sure if it was doable in 0 0.48, honestly. Um, we don't have access to, like skill progress and stuff I didn't think um, maybe something changed since I looked uh, but in any case random pal notes that there is this MBSP uncapped open MW Lua and CGD compat and they're talking about hey they're talking about mine yippee my reworking of Grey Wander's work to be clear I didn't write this mod. I just liked it a lot and want to keep it going. And I've done that. And so this kind person here, Phoenix Warrior, port rebuild of Magicka base spell progression in Lua combined with a universal skill uncapper. Designed for use with and requiring Lua edition. So interesting. Point forty eight or newer. You know, um, general description of what MBSP is conceptually. If you're not familiar, a quick high-level explanation is that in Morrowind, out of the box, any spell you cast gives you a fixed progression for your XP towards that skill. I think it's like one point. And so the, the big idea behind MBSP is that you get a XP skill increase relative to the Magicka that it costs to do whatever spell you used. And it, and it's a great way to play as a magic user. I mean, I think anybody who plays Morrowind probably does a little magic, probably. Um, and it just, it really makes the whole experience a lot more fun, in my opinion. It's a must-have. Um, you know, why would we, you know, okay, we have the MW script version, the classic. Let's just look at that here. MBSP. Or even magic... Uh, Based. Do I even have the original one on here? I think we had to, from the get-go, use patch versions. Yeah, okay, so this is a Grey Wander patched one. Okay, so, you know, we have this version and quite a few additionally patched ones that are, that are well-supported, including one maintained by Alvazir. Why do we need a Lua port? That's an excellent question. I'll explain. I think a Lua port would be good because, number one, um, and it's been a while since I looked at the code for MBSP. I think it was around the time that I made this one because, again, I was thinking about it from day one. But definitely in the case of NCGDMW, the amount of code that was required to simply make the mod run which if we look here, we got about a 580 lines of Lua. And then if you count the user interface code, just to be fair, that's another 300 lines um, for all the various menus that I've implemented, including the script menu, including the decay level progress menu. And as I recall, the MW script version of uh, NCGD was like 16,000 lines of MW script because you're not able to say like, uh, you know, like what we do elsewhere up here. You're not able to say, you know, you're not able to compartmentalize your logic. You're not able to say like, oh yeah, uh, you know, do your, do your attribute, you know, I forget what exactly this function does. It's been a long time since I wrote it. But you're not able to say like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, here's, a, here's a function that does something to an attribute. 
you know, in MW script, you have to like write the same thing out for every attribute in within the same script. You could probably do some like shenanigans to have multiple scripts, but then it's like getting a little spicy. So, so Lua in, uh, taking a step back, Lua improves the code quality or potentially could allow the mod author to improve the code quality. Better code quality means better mod means better experience for the users. Um, so it's a it's a good thing. Um, and also, I should note that Lewis scripts are quite fast. Or could, again, could potentially be quite fast. You can write Lua code that that you know is slow and kills your frame rate. You could do that, sure. Uh, you know, like um, just looking at my code here. You know, this is a potentially spicy function right here, just because like. You know, it has a fixed complexity because there's a fixed number of skills, but still, like, every time we want to check an attribute, there's the cost of checking every skill, figuring out what's related, blah, blah, blah. Excuse me, we could be really careless here and um, have performance, you know, implications. Killing FPS, awkward stuttering when, it, when the mod crunches, pardon me, drinking my coffee. So anyway, a Lua version could potentially have good code, but it could also have um, bad code just as easily. Uh, and then I think um, another advantage of doing a Lua version is that we have the interface system here, which allows for better mod interoperability. I haven't looked at the code yet. We're going to do that in a minute uh, for this on un MBSP uncapped. But um, I'm hoping that they use some of the interfaces that I put here together. And so just to recap, an interface in OpenMW Lua is code that you can write that other mods can use for compatibility or whatever purposes. Um, if you're used to, for example, MWSE Lua scripts, everything is kind of global and things can, can do whatever with each other. Everything is very partitioned in OpenMW Lua, segmented, isolated. So you have to allow access to functionality by way of an interface. So for example, this one right here, decay rate, takes two arguments potentially. You can give it just a value. Uh, <laughs> remembering what it does. You can give it just a value and um, set the decay rate. So if you're a mod author, for example, and you want to like make the player decay uber fast, you know, temporarily for whatever reason. I mean, you could do that uh, if they have, and you could see also if it's even enabled at all, you could find out what it is um, because we're giving it back. We're giving the value back. So you could see, well, what is it? Is it enabled? If so, well, let's, let's crank it up temporarily for like some difficulty. That's just a contrived example somebody could use because I made an interface for it. Growth rate, similarly toggleable. And because uh, NCGD has its own way of figuring out what attributes are, we have an interface here for external mods to work with NCGD and say, okay, we're, we're, we're buffing, at, you know, an attribute and we're going to do it under the, the NCGD system. Um, now, technically speaking, there is some code written here that is supposed to recognize external changes and consider them. For example, when you become a vampire in the game, you're going to get some buffs that don't exactly register as like, uh, you know, with the lighter text. Um, they just look like your stats got raised. And so that's what this kind of this code does is it tries to see if something, as I put in the comment, has modified and preserved the difference. So in theory, bugs like this luck thing shouldn't be happening. Um, that's a really interesting one. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm kind of going way off the deep end here. First thing I want to do is, you know, let's... Um, so I've downloaded this. MBSP uncapped. Let's take a quick look in here. We got just one script. All right. Jump all the way to the bottom. Oh, okay, not that much code. Cool, okay. All right. Hotkey. Interesting. So, hmm. Not sure what that does, but... Enable the uncapper. Okay, cool. Progress menu key. Cool. That's cool. I like that. 
you can set the XP rate. Very cool. Uh, okay, so I guess this is another benefit of doing a Lua mod, right? You got a cool menu where the users can kind of set things the way they like. Put a default. So for natural character growth and decay, I put a default. I like fast decay, slow growth, which you should do because you get OP way too fast in Morrowind. Just trust me. Use the decay. It's going to be fine. Refund enabled. Cool. Wow, yeah, this is really great so far. I like the settings. Um, cool, very familiar patterns here. Nice. Oh, cool. <laughs> They're using some of this is this code right here is some of the code that I made. <laughs> so that's really cool um, to see. OpenMW UI code is really cool, but it's like to explain why what this is quickly. When you're in the game you get a presentation of your skills. And you can kind of see that here, right? You can see the combat skills, thief skills, name, and a, and a percentage. And that's, you know, in the code, that's what this looks like right here. And this row code is something that I made to kind of, because each row looks like this at a, at a very low level. Um, you know, the OpenMW UI framework in Lua made by Anton Uramer. I'm sorry if I may said your name wrong. Uh, is it awesome? But it's kind of tough to wrap your head around. Because you have to think, it's just like tables of tables of tables. And you got to think about your types of tables and what they contain and so on and so forth. Like if I had to like really, and even this, what is text? Why text is more yet more tables. Um so I found it easier to make a little bit like this and say, you know, text versus just having that over and over and over again. And the result then ends up being something like what you see here, right? Like we got a we got a head, we got a gap, we got rows, blah, blah, blah. And it ends up looking like more like it makes sense to a human a little bit. Um, and for the programmer, when you look at it, many months after the fact and you forgot what the hell it was you were doing it helps you understand maybe anyways going back to here i'm honestly really excited to look at this because i saw random pals email come in last night i didn't quite look at it right away but i thought ooh, you know yeah mbsp i want that of course but then this morning i look at it and i see somebody's already done it at delta magica so go back up here. Huh, interesting. So they got a pretty intricate. Interesting Delta MT table. We have to get into the guts of how this works. May not exactly do that today. I might just take a quick scan of this and see. All right, so on update. One thing to note. On update is every single tick. And not, you know, that's not just, you know, that's basically every frame. You know, it's going always. Uh, updates don't happen, though, when the menu's up, for example, when you got your inventory. So it's not crunching then. I think that's on frame is the handler for that. Anyways, got a lot of business happening here, though. Nicely commented code here. Props. I don't have to like really know what you were doing to know what you were doing, provided you're truthful here. So, cool, okay. Storing changes in Magicka because we want to know how much was spent, okay. I see. We have skill progress is what? It's a table they made, huh? Yeah, okay. Okay, so they're externally keeping track of skill progress. Wow, I think I was too lazy to do this.
but that seems to be, yeah, that's what, wow, that's what they did. Okay. Hmm. Kind of loving this. At the moment, I don't see why it needs my mod, though. Wow, this is cool. Again, I don't remember how much code the MW script one was, but this is a quite a bit easier to understand, I think. It's all in one place, and again, we're like just under 600 lines of code, and they've been you know, liberal with new lines. I probably would have put this all in one line just because I like doing that. Cool, wow. Um, I think unless I want to become an expert of this code, which I do and I don't, right? I do just for the science of it. I want to know. I'm a curious mind. I have to understand. But also, I have limited time in the day. So, you know, I'm just going to... Let's just try it, right? Like, it looks good, though. They they clearly learned a lot from my code, it seems like, for better or for worse. Um, so let's just add this to my minimal. Um, yeah, I've been working on a patch. Maybe I'll look at that later in the stream too. Just keeping the patch game going, and yeah, definitely want to. I definitely want to add in the 6.0 update for those of you following along at home. Better ships and boats by Resdane Revival Team is just a phenomenal boat replacer mod. But there's quite a few conflicts, unfortunately. And the latest one I'm trying to fix, Tomb of the Snow Prince, does the move the whole island thing. So you got some like straggler boats. And, um, yeah, so anyway, without get too, getting too deep in the weeds there, um, we can maybe look at that later. I want to get that done this weekend, though, because that's a bit of a, that'll round out my 2.6 update for the patches. Okay. Cool. Well, again, um, just going back to here, I will say Phoenix Warrior 7. Well done. I mean, looks really cool. I feel... When I hear about somebody making something, I'm kind of like, all right, cool, but how did they do it? And I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it looks good, you know, so props. Congratulations. We're going to try it out. All right. Yeah, of course, just one script. This is how you, by the way, register scripts in OpenMW Lua, if you didn't know. This really simple format here. For now, I don't think it's actually like a long... I think in the long term, they're going to have a way to attach scripts via the CS, you know, like you do with MW script stuff. Um, I don't know. I like this strictly text CS-free approach, but certainly the CS needs that ability. Okay, so let's get this file name here. Oh, yeah, of course it needs my mod. So let's grab that. Excuse me. All right. I think we should be in business here to see this in action. Oh, I'm a little pumped. I did not think this was doable, but, you know, um, anything is doable if you want to make it happen enough. And Phoenix Warrior here wanted to make it happen, and they built a little system where they are externally keeping track of the skill progress, independent of the engines, you know, tracking... So we don't have a system for modifying tracking. Who cares? Todd Willing will find a way. And we did. They did. So that's cool. I'm really excited to see that. It's a creative approach that it seems to be well done. First things first. Let's check out that script settings. Plus uncapper. So honestly, I would... My first bit of feedback here for the modder is, I would love to see the uncapper is a separate mod. 
I feel like it is not directly related to the concern of Magicka-based skill progression. Directly. They're tangentially related, right? It would be nice to have them separate, but, you know, you got the option in here, so whatever. It's good. Um, yes, no, yes, no. All right. Progress menu key. So I assume... We'll put it on under M. I assume I didn't take a close look, but I assume they're using the ERM code that I took for my key selector. Cool. You know, I'm just going to... Spell refunding begins. Oh, nice. All that configurable. Wow. Cool. Very cool. This is... I'm happy with this. You know, this is, the, again, the beauty of OpenMW Lua is allowing this stuff to be configurable. Set a sane default for the users. But, you know, wow, I love this. All right. And uh, so just for reference, too, let's configure my own mod. I didn't do that yet. Stats menu key. And, and right, there's my menu. Here's theirs. Hey. Wow, neat. Hi. <laughs> so, okay, so... We have a, a separate skill progress menu here because in OpenMW Lua, we can't really affect this user interface yet. We can't, you know, we can't touch the vanilla user interface yet. We can add our own so long as we don't want to pause the game. You'll, you'll note that we can pull the menu up and still look around. We can't pause the game. Wow, this is cool. <laughs> I love it. I really love this. Um... It will be really interesting to not need the classic MBSP. Um, I'm going to start playing with this. I don't know. I I would encourage you folks as well, if you are following along at home and you're playing with Natural Character Growth and Decay, uh, Lua Edition. If you're not, that's cool too. Maybe you like the vanilla leveling. My buddy Eddie loves that vanilla leveling, and that's cool. But if you're playing with this, you absolutely, I think, need this. Um, this is, you know, a very exciting find. Thank you, Random Pal, again, for the feature request. To be honest with you, this is one I think that I can, like, put a implemented sticker on. Um, it's interesting to note, though, that with 0.49... If we don't have it right now, we very soon will have access to properly have access to the skill progress mechanic. So, um, could simplify their code quite a bit here and actually use the actual mechanic. And, and the consequence of that would be they wouldn't need their extra menu. They could be affecting the actual engine's progress stat, and, and therefore it would reflect here. So, very exciting. Um, I can't say for sure if this is a complete success of a port, but I can tell you at a quick glance, my initial impression is, wow, cool. Nicely done. Um, nicely done. This is going to be a part of my load order, personally. And I'm going to check it out. And and please, I encourage you to do so as well. Um, and, and yeah, if you make something like this, oh, man, tell me. I would have loved to hear about this. Um, and that's only been around for a few weeks. But, yeah, definitely let me know because I'm really bad about checking Nexus as much as I should. All right. Wow, that was really cool. Let's go back to the list. Looks pretty good. That's the answer there. Looks pretty good. I'm excited. All right, moving on. So this one um, is a bug report somebody filed while I was kind of uh, hibernating. And then it sat unlooked at for a while. But in a nutshell, it seems like changes to luck are not being preserved. And um, I can definitely accept the possibility of a problem there. Not just because, you know, I'm a human and I make mistakes, but because I happen to know that luck is specially handled in this code in a couple places. And where there is such special handling, there's extra opportunity for bugs. 
is what I've learned. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look. Without further ado, maybe this is something quickly that I can quickly solve. Um, maybe it's not. We'll just take a look. We'll do a quick search for luck. So you can see right here. Luck is specially calculated. Anytime, any other attribute. So luck, taking a step back, luck comes from the value of everything else. Therefore, when anything else changes, we must also see if we should change luck. If change, then recalculate luck true. And that's what we're doing there. And so moving on. If we do recalculate luck, then we got this little code block here that does so. Uh, oh no, no, we're not actually recal. Yeah, we're doing that all the way down here. So this is maths that I preserved from the original natural character growth and decay. It comes from the head of Grey Wander. These are not my maths. I just tried to recreate an accurate result so they do their thing here to generate XP if you will and then we we change luck here again using my interface my attribute interface yes my mod uses its own interface so what I would like to do is I would like to spawn in bitter cup grow my luck jump around a bunch or something, I don't know. Um, and then and then watch it go down. I believe that it happens, but I just want to see. That way, when I fix it, I can know that I actually fixed it. And so, on that note, to fix it, what we're going to want to do here is probably right here. We're going to record the current luck. We're going to do something similar to um, what we're doing Attribute diff right here. Because we get that treatment right here for everything else to recalculate. Never returns luck because luck comes from the result of everything else. You see here where I said before, the special case introduces bugs. Luck is never getting the diff approach. And that's why the changes are lost. So... The fixes already exist in there in the code base. We just got to make sure that we do it. So it would be something like this. Um, um, luck. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So this figures out. The attribute diff figures out, you know, okay, what, do, what does NCGD know luck should be? But what is it actually? Is there something more there? And, and then we keep that on hand as, as the diff. So this tells us if there's any difference. And honestly, I could probably just fix it right now like this. Because if there is no difference, this is zero. And it's plus zero. And plus zero is plus zero, right? Can never hurt. This very well may fix the bug. So in the interest of not fixing it though, right away, because I want to see it broken, let's put it back. Let's spawn in the bitter cup and uh, let's look at what uh, bitter cup, Morrowind. Look up the object, object ID so I can spawn it in. Artifact, bitter cup 01. And this is a bit of a spoiler, my apologies. But the bitter cup is some item you get over the course of some quests gives you a permanent attribute buff. Excuse me. And you'll note that the bug report only said it was with luck, which tells me probably that my little attribute diff function there does its job. We just weren't doing it for luck. <laughs> Whoops. All right. So let's, uh, let's focus here. All right, um, so I want to bring my testing script up. 
Let's give ourselves... On the left here is, you can see the file name at the bottom there, testing.mw script. And if you're not aware, this is just how I load up my testing character. When I'm testing the game, this is how I cheat myself to where I need to be. Um, very handy pattern. Okay, and so right now I'm cheating myself to have a bitter cup. Let's get in the game, shall we? Yeah, we could just be wherever. So there we go, we have the bitter cup. No? That's not the one. There must be a different object that actually gives you the buff. Okay. That's fine. We can figure we can figure that out. No big deal. Spoiler alert. My friends, <laughs> if you haven't gone too far down uh, some of the guild quests, fighters or thieves, don't look at this. Maybe go grab some, you know, fresh air if you're able to. <laughs> Come back in a few. Ooh, Todd Tessa. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Thank Todd. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Admiral Ralston. <laughs> okay, I've never actually been in here before. That's cool. That's fun. Uh, well, where's this copy of the Bitter Cup, you say? Here we go. Hmm. It's been a minute since I did this, so I'm actually not sure what I was expecting to happen. Uh, let's see here. When you activate it, you will permanently increase your highest attribute. I see. Oh, okay. Increase your lowest by 20. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, we can uh, we can set this up. Been a minute since I did Bitter Cup. I'm way overdue for a Morrowind playthrough, by the way. Oof. Played a couple of times uh, recently on my Steam Deck to play the new uh, Doug Goodall content. User AFFA on Nexus Mods. Um and there's so much more content from other amazing people. Mel Melchior Dark has just, like, blown my mind away with quest mods lately. Just, come on. How amazing can you get? <laughs> so I'm due for a playthrough, nonetheless. Definitely waiting on the next patch for Pyrrhus update, though, before I really, really jump in. Okay. So, hand-to-hand. -hand, 100. What on earth is doing that? And all right, I have something doing that. I don't know. That's what happens when your cheat script gets out of control. Hand to hand, a hundred again. Oh, you know that might be a. Might be a defaults thing, actually. For the for the you know the test character in OpenMW, so let's do this. Set hand to hand. Five. Okay, and then uh, let's just see what that gives us. What I'm trying to do here is arrive at like a you know a setup that's going to give me luck as my highest, so I can see the change. Okay, so the, actually it looks like they're all twenty. This is good. 
They're all 20. Good. And, um, okay. So then what I'm going to do. Just cheat it up to be the highest. We're going to drink the bitter cup. See a buff. Okay. And then um, we're going to lose it because we're not doing the diff. Wow, I just did the release of 1.0 yesterday. We're going to have 1.1 probably by the end of the day. Uh, maybe tomorrow even. But uh, a sleeping panda. Thank you. Going to go ahead and thumbs up that one. You definitely caught a bug in the special case. It just goes to show you, kids. You want to generalize your code as much as you can. Less is more because more code means more chances for you to, you know, screw up like I did. All right. When I wrote that diff, I wrote that diff stuff after the fact. Are you kidding me? And, um... Uh, I wrote it when I was actually playing as a vampire... I got to a point where I became a vampire and like, you know, my stats went haywire um, because they make uh, what appear to be permanent buffs and um, it was no good. It was not preserved and CGD just totally crapped the bed and um, so I had to fix it. But I just forgot about luck being a special case, you know, it's didn't really jump up and bite me. <laughs> until Sleeping Panda put the issue up there. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that again. Now, let's go. Ooh, we're very slow here, but as you can see. Oh, it's my lowest. Okay, fine. Really, if I wanted to, uh, so why it went down was because of just reasons. Because of NCGD doing what it do, right? I should have used the interface. Can't exactly do that for my testing script yet. So this will suffice anyways, though. Because it should now drop. Lock down to zero. Great. So now if we have any change whatsoever, then... Um, Luck should just arbitrarily crunch back up, and we shouldn't lose the... What did it say here? By 20, we shouldn't have a, a decrease of 20 that we lose. So really, I think I'm just going to jump around like a madman. Here we go. We're going to enjoy Todd test uh, scene here. Todd's super tester guy. I feel like that's my job description sometimes. Todd's super tester guy. We all are. If we're still playing Morrowind today, we are. I wish I knew off the top of my head a better way to cheat this in there, but... Hey, Smallio. You hear me okay? Okay. Yeah, just a raising athletics didn't quite cause my attributes to crunch. Not enough XP. Uh, they didn't change. All right, thank you for the feedback, Smalio. I appreciate it. Let's uh, let's go to some more interesting scenery while I jump around like a madman. Just need to raise my. Hmm. I wonder if I can. Okay. There we go. And there we go. Should be still zero. We lost the diff. All right. Well, I suppose since I more or less already wrote the fix, let's see if I actually fixed it.
And so in this case, it would be plus minus 20. And it would still, we would still be down to zero. All right, well, hold on to your butts. Hopefully I fixed it. If not, I'm going to shelve it for now and, and re-examine it. But that is clearly the issue. We're missing a preservation of an external change to that attribute. Hence the bug. That at least appears to be the case based on the, the description of the problem. All right. There we go. Oof, I need a bib. Coffee stains on my shirt. That's my heavy stuff. All right. Squashing bugs. Hey, it's been a productive first hour, though, I think. I didn't quite do many changes to the website, but, you know, um, this stuff's important, too. we got to make sure these mods work right. So, And that bug reports are promptly... Okay, maybe not promptly, but addressed. <laughs> it's been a couple months since I even got to this one, so... We're going to do it, though, I think. Zero. Okay. Clear. Set. Acrobatics. Ten. Hmm. I really expected that to work. I know I said I was going to shelve it, but I have to know. What's going on here? Oop. All right. I gotta know. Should have worked. Excuse me. Let's move that a little bit. Excuse me so I can see what's going on. just like we want to see. Uh, drink it. Zero. Okay. So I think this is a bad... Yeah, my, it's not even running. Um, my code isn't even running. This is a bad test. It's a bad test, Johnny. All right, speed 22. Yeah, my code isn't running. Because I would expect to see the luck diff here. So I wonder, I wonder if we can do a... Uh... Cool. All right. Bear with me here. I've never really messed with the Lua console, but that's what you're looking at here. The other console that you get by default when you hit Tilda is your MW script console. It's akin to what's in the vanilla game, but this is Lua mode on a player context. <sighs> so This script is on the player. But it's really just bound as an engine handler. Let's see what we get. Okay. Okay, so this is actually too limited, I think, for me.
What if I just do regular Lua? Hmm, Lua Global Context. I'm hoping that I can get access to an interface from here, but I don't think I can. So, okay. Um, and, and hoping that I can adjust my attributes not this way, but with the NCGD interface. So that my code down there gets run, because otherwise it's just not going to run. It's not this right here. So I think maybe I did actually fix the issue and just cheating with the console is not properly triggering a recalculation here. Which is a little sketchy to me, but okay, let's see here. Print. Okay. Yeah, I would have expected This guy happens every frame. <laughs> so something, something is not right. Something's not right here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's just not running my code. Still not running my code. <clears throat> Absolutely should have hit here. <gasps> I just had a thought, yeah. I'm not running the right code, actually. Um, ah, yeah, so... Taking a step back, taking a little bit of a look into my the world of my setup and how things work. So I uh, obviously I'm the the owner or whatever of Natural Character Growth and Decay, and uh, so uh, you know I build the mod, I use the mod, but I also build it. But I want to make sure that what I use is the same as what you folks all use. So to that end, you can see I got this little underscore named folder. And I download the, the release of the mod. And I'm, that's what I play with to make sure I got the same thing. Underneath the development files. And so, yeah. <laughs> Whoop, my loadout here is not using my development build. It's, you know, it's using my everybody else build, you know, which is what I want normally. Not today. Let's fix that. Special cases. Again, biting me in the foot. It's my special case of trying to use what y'all use. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's gonna hold up. I gotta I have to compile the plugins. And if you don't know what that means, what I mean is I gotta take this text file, we call a YAML file, and turn it into the plugin that you load in the game. I normally do that somewhere else. Doesn't happen on my computer, actually. Fun fact. <laughs> Oops. Apparently don't have the... What am I even doing here? Alright. Okay, hey, I got weird targets here. I actually have, like, the name of the plugin. I'm gonna change that, honestly. Make build is better. 
All right, anyway, make and see. Okay, there we go. And the reason for not, you know, building the plugins myself and having it done externally in an automatic process is to prevent the likelihood, to reduce the likelihood of missing stuff, you know. Maybe I'll change the text file that the plugin gets built from, and I want to make sure the plugin gets updated. If I have it saved in, as part of the package, then I got to make sure to build it every time. Now it just happens automatically, and I don't have to think about it. The less I got to think, less chance for me to foot gun myself, right? Less special cases. Okay. All right. So going back here, we got this loaded up. Good, good, good. Okay. I really should comment out my gear so I don't have to keep dumping it on the ground. Whoop. Maybe next time. I keep forgetting what's heavy. I'm a big dingus. All right. Now we're actually running my code. See? Hello. And you'll note there that time is changing. It's running on update. Let's take a look back up here. This was a, basically the point of the whole point of me doing this was kind of as a sanity check, right? Like, what is happening? You know, I fully expected that to work. We don't need that noise anymore. And so one nice thing about OpenMW Lua is you can disable the code in your code. And then you type, you might have seen me do this earlier. Reload Lua. And just like that. Look, Ma, no noise. All right. Let's get over there. And as a reminder, we're going to know my code ran. And we're getting the diff as expected. Because we're going to have a little friendly message here printing it back to us. Okay? Okay. Out of coffee, but boy, I need some more. Oh, all right. Okay, 15. Right? Drank it. Zero. Good. What is our speed ride? Whoop. Don't try this at home. Or do. Just don't goof as much as me. 20 is our speed right now. I'm going to put it at 21. Hey, hey, all right. Here you go. We're still zero. All right. Well, I think that I think that's fixed. Going to play with it a little bit more on my own. Um But yeah, to recap. To recap. So first off, I'm sitting on another change here. I'll get into it in a minute. We're going to fold that in for now. Don't look at that. Actually, you can't even see it. <laughs> All right. So this is the change we got that we just did. Very simple, right? As I said, luck was a special case. Because it doesn't grow the same way the other ones do. And that special case introduced the opportunity for a bug. And that bug was the absence of considering external changes to luck. So now we do that. We call my handy dandy function attribute diff. We tell it we want the diff for luck. Tell me what is, what are the changes to luck that we didn't do? And factor that into our equation here. And that appears to fix the bug. Number 14 over here. So I'm gonna mess around with it later today on my Steam Deck. 
maybe get a little playthrough going. It's still a little bit hazy outside. Won't be able to get a bike ride in, but more time for Morrowind, right? Um, and dinner with the fam family too. But definitely, I think I think we fixed this one right here, right now. And it was a pretty small change too that I'm really happy with. A code I wrote months ago coming to save me today. It's always a great feeling. Now, this other code right here. A little bit of a look at the future for you. In the future. There we go. Where is where is it? Hello, hello. I'm looking at the wrong version. <sighs> Maggot failing me here. If we look at this code. Hold up. There we go. This is a look at the future right here. If we look at this code right here. What this is basically doing is it's saying if you have OpenMW 0.49 or newer. We're going to do some neat stuff here. Otherwise, we do some hackery to try and figure out. Do you have the plugin loaded that you needed? So this code right here, taking a step back. This code right here is to help folks make sure they got the mod set up right. Because there's two plugins you got to load. There's the OMW scripts that loads the Lua. Excuse me. And there's the OMW add-on that loads some other things. GS, uh, GMSTs such as these. And these are the values we expect. So in OpenMW 0.48, I have to kind of look at the values of the GSMTs. In OpenMW 0.49, I can actually look directly at the load order. And I can see what's loaded. I can see the ordering of what's loaded. Maybe you're thinking what I'm thinking right now. Could we have an MLOX mod that makes sure things are loaded and warns you? I mean, yes, we could. Could it even, like, properly order things? I don't know about that. As it as the uh, API is now, I don't think it can do that. But we could make it do that, certainly. Um, some kind of a mod, though, to check your load order. Excuse me here. Got something in my eye. Some kind of a mod to check your load order would be pretty awesome. But anyway, that's kind of the gist of what this is doing. We're trying to see, okay, do you have the stuff loaded properly? And if you don't, we're going to put the you're missing stuff uh, menu up there. Which, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, that's what it looks like. Here we go. Says it all. You gotta have all that for the mod to work right. And yeah, so what you're looking at is okay, there you go. The code that makes that happen, right? Okay. Well, cool. That's really cool. I'm not gonna commit this just yet. Um I'm not gonna commit this just yet. But I do believe that this fixes the issue. I'm going to play with it a little bit, respond to the, the kind user, Sleeping Panda, and let them know uh, that we got it. We got it. Cool. I'm checking it off. And also, I think it's time to sit down, so please pardon me. Excuse me. Ooh. <laughs> I love my carbonated beverage. All right. Cool. Wow. I wasn't really expecting to fix this one here. Um, and I wasn't expecting this thing to suck, but I also wasn't expecting it to be relatively solid, which it really appears to be. 
And I will be playing with that tonight as well. If I, if I get some time in tonight. Seems like it might not happen. All right, well, um, yeah. So uh, my point remains from last week that uh, there's probably stuff we could close. Things I fixed, but I just didn't keep track of, oh, is there an issue? And, uh, you know, do I need to... Hey, <laughs> you can see my guitar amp. My little orange guy. Yes, I do play on that thing. That is the normal spot for it for now until I build my recording studio. Orange Micro Dark. Pex Punch. I love it. I don't need anything more. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. All right. Yeah, great. So this and this I consider a success for today. Uh, going back to the issues list. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Evan Hart Hole. Want to help out our friend Andre here. Reported an unfortunate hole. You can see it right there. Eesh. Some kind of a land record contact, uh, conflict. I wanted, to, I wanted to spend some time to look at this for our friend Andre today. And, um, you know, I personally don't have this. So let's just go ahead. I should note, this is me doing a little bit of research before the stream... We'll take another look at this in a moment. But uh, I should note, I got terminals all over. Here we go. I should note that um, Andre may be playing with the 5.x series of Total Overhaul, which at this point is significantly different from what I have, which would be the 6.x series. And so there is a, a possibility that... Some change I have made that will be coming to the website fixes this. Now, to that end, I was looking here. Which one of these? This one. And so, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with looking at terminal output here, what I have done here is I am this first part here, grep minus IV, old Ebonheart. I'm ignoring old Ebonheart. We're not looking at that. <laughs> Don't want that noise. But I do want to highlight Ebonheart in my Delta plugin merge log. And the whole point of that is I want to see what's doing stuff there, right? Like, we're going to track down possibly what could be a point for our friend Andre to look at here to fix their game. we got to know what's changing Ebonheart. So... Many changes here. Adding merge record cell. Okay, so let's take a look at this first line here. Um, if you're not familiar with Delta plugin or what really it's doing, I'm where some people t like to skip Delta plugin because it's confusing, and I get that. But you cannot skip Delta plugin. It's very important. Maybe not for iHeart Vanilla. It's maybe a little less important, but certainly expanded vanilla, total overhaul. Your game will be broken if you don't do this. And so what we can see right here at the very top is cell 18, 4, 18, 4. But Delta Plugin sees it as 18x4. A lot of stuff touches it. A lot of stuff. I mean, just very busy with the changes here on this one. Where even is that? Let's have a look. Actually, before I jump into that, I wanted to go and see what this looks like in my game and also try to nail down what exactly is this cell. Before I start randomly looking at output from Delta Plugin, we should, we should you know, narrow down where we want to look. So let's figure out what cell this is. Let's look at my game and see that it's not like that. And try to figure out how Andre can get here. So theirs is not like that. <laughs> These land record conflicts are a little frustrating because they're so nasty. Like you literally fall through that. That's no good. All right. Mm. Okay. Did I? No, I did not. T Mux on this one. Okay. What was that selling? An eighteen comma four. Eighteen. Four. 
All right. Give it a moment. Uh, ooh, excuse me. This LaCroix, I tell you what, this carbonated water. I love it. Well, it gives me the belches. My little potato. I'm about to melt. You can do it, little buddy. There you go. I love my framework laptop. This Intel iGPU is admirable, but as you can see, it's struggling a little bit. We're struggling. Okay, where is this? Oh, hey, look. We're in Sageth Mora. How did we end up here? Oh, the noise, noise. So chances are, Ebenhart Underworks, obviously. Not chances are. It's a fact. Ebenhart Underworks makes some change. Hey, look at that. In Sadrith Mora. All right. Come on, little buddy. There you go. Oof. Big oof. Load the game up. There we go. Very exciting that this is not going to be a thing soon. Props to our friend Phoenix Warrior 7. I mean, I'm so excited. I can't get over that Magic of Base skill progression mod. I'm Lua mod. I'm just really excited about that. Okay, let's go back to Evan Hart now, shall we? And I think my stream may be potatoing it up. I apologize. Here we go. Alright, close enough. <laughs> oh no, but I got my super slow guy with me. Yeah, I'm surprised can even move. Uh, okay. Oof. So, where Andre is talking about is just on the other side of this building. And another thought I had was, it's possible they have an older version of Delta Plugin, which is a suggestion I will put forth to them. Maybe, maybe try and updating Delta Plugin, if that's an option, of course. Okay, but, so we're right here, and just get far back enough to kind of get the same vantage point they had. Okay, right there. Okay, I think I'm I think I'm right there. I think there's no mistake in it. I'm right there. And thankfully, whew, we got no such land seam here. Alright. We're good. But, what on earth cell is this? Um, I think he's a little bit closer here. So let's, uh... Sound like something I can ORI. Here we go. This is borderline. Literally. But it'll give us an idea. 212. That's a ballpark. I'll take it. Two twelve. Two twelve. Just putting that there for later. I don't need the whole thing. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's. Let's narrow it down a little further. We don't want any non-cell records, I don't think. Hmm, yeah. Because the landscape record would be under the cell change, so. Because I think that is a landscape problem. I've seen it before. 
Oh yes, I have seen it before. Okay, two minus two. We're getting closer there. Wait a minute. Minus two. Two minus 13. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, 2 minus 12, 2 minus 13. This is probably... Alright. Yeah, so there's lots here that's not on the current iteration of the list. Ownership overhaul. Province Cyrodiil stuff. Adenumeran reclaimed is a new one that I've added locally. Haven't even got to try it yet. <clears throat> Looks awesome. Rise of the Tribe Unmourned. Yeah, there's just... This one is a new... This is on the list. Repopulated. Morrowind is new. Huh. Better. Ships and Boats. Anyways. This is almost certainly... Yeah, this is almost certainly it. So what I'm going to do for Andre, after the stream, I'm going to respond to them and, and suggest that they check their Delta plugin output. And, uh, you know, we may not find the answer, they may not find the answer here in this exact place, but I think a good place to start looking is to check the log and look for something like this. You want changes affecting this cell, which I believe is 2 minus 3. Actually, let's load up the game. Minus 13, I'm sorry. That should put us like right there. question is, do I get a new video card before I move my gaming rig over here? Thinking about it. Good cards are cheaper than what my card was two years ago, you know, before like pandemic inflation prices. So I don't know. I'm really tempted. Radeon uh, 6750 I think I was looking at is like under 500 bucks. Which is a lot of money, but compared to how video cards have been. Okay, here we are. <laughs> I'm going to buy a <laughs> several hundred dollar video card to play a 21-year-old game. That fact is not lost on me. Okay, so this isn't exactly the cell. Or maybe it is like the corner. We're going to have to open this up in the CS. We need to find out for sure. These kinds of errors are t tough to track down, so I don't want Andre to feel like they're on their own. You're not on your own, buddy. We're going to help out. Ugh. We're going to need to open MWCS. Is kind of chugging on my, uh, on my load order here. We'll have to work on that. Let's close that up again. We'll just do uh Oh yeah, New Vegas. I was trying to run New Vegas on 0 0.49 or at least just load the data in. I was having a chat with Section yesterday about doing that. Definitely want to do that. Maybe I'll get that running during the stream here. We can go to Doc Mitchell's house and greet him. How about that? That's what Doc Mitchell says if you never played New Vegas. Sounds like he's from Canada and not from Nevada. That's just my opinion. All right. Uh, we don't, I'll load the main plugins, but that's it. We're just finding out what the name of that actual cell is here. So we can point our friend in the right direction. And so what I'm doing here is I'm opening, my, opening OpenMWCS. And I'm looking at the game content. And I'm searching for cells named 
Ebenhart, starting with Ebenhart. And what that does is that narrows down the exterior cells. You can see these two at the top here. These are the exterior cells that are named Ebenhart. Sometimes exterior cells, most of the time, they just are named after whatever their region is, Ashlands region, West Gash region. But sometimes they got a special name. They have an ID like this, which means they're exterior. But they have a name. Anyways. So let's pull up the handy dandy 3D scene viewer. Which you will note, right here in the center of each cell, it tells us what the cell coordinate is. And if we look here, the cell that is giving Andre grief would be hmm, what would that be ooh it might just be this border right here hold up yeah ooh maybe so there's some problematic terrain edit on a cell border is what it looks like hmm that's a big clue. So he's got two mods that are changing 1, 13 and 2, 13 respectively. And the land record changes don't line up. Or maybe or maybe Delta plugin merges them wrongly in an old version which I have seen. So as a note for Andre here, let's go and write this down so I can tell them appropriately later. Looks like bad terrain edit terrain conflict on the border of two comma thirteen and one uh, negative thirteen. It's uh, so some some kind of a terrain conflict. Maybe they have an additional mod that I don't have. Maybe it's um older version of Delta Plugin that makes a mistake. Could be a bunch of things. When you're dealing with, you know, 400-ish, 300 to 400 content files, a lot could happen. <laughs> That's why we got to be judicious about what we add. And also help encourage good practices for modders. All right, yeah, so, okay, I'm, I'm going to respond to our friend Andre here after the stream and just kind of share my thoughts. But, it, again, it, it does seem like if we look back here, oh, I closed the CS, but if we if we look back in the video at a couple seconds ago at the CS, it does look like this is a cell border, and we probably have one mod that makes some change up here on another mod that makes some change right here, and then the result is this kind of funness so um it should be enough to get andre on the right track to know the, that it's these two cells and that they can potentially look at the output from delta plugin and see what changes it and i'm going to kind of talk out loud about another feature that i want to propose to benjamin winger for delta plugin and that is some kind of a object visualizer because in this case, it would be really helpful to load up your your content results, right? What does the engine have when it runs the game? Loads all your plugins. What do you got? And be able to see it in kind of a, a visual format, you know? I need to flesh that idea out a lot before I talk to Benjamin about it. But I feel like something like that would be valuable for troubleshooting purposes both when you have an issue or when you're trying to prevent issues. When you're adding something in, you kind of want to see where it fits, you know. Um, that sort of a thing. So, yeah. I've been hard whole. I think it's solvable. I don't have the problem. We should be able to give them a good enough clue to get after it. All right. Ah, actually doing website stuff now. Cool. Okay. Thank you to Gonzo. And Hurdrax, big thanks. Hashing this out on Discord um, while I was kind of busy during the week. 
So that's it all right there, though. Um, we're currently recommending a setup that is broken for people. And so we want to fix that. Let's take a look, shall we? And and to clarify, I think the, the the actual solution, even though these naturalized mods are really cool, they they make an attempt to be a bit more thoughtful in their implementation, and I love it, and I you know I want to make it work, but I just don't have enough time in the day to make patches for everything at this point. Morrowind is modding is not my job at this point, sadly. Todd willing, we'll get there. So anyway, the the solution would be to um as gonzo notes here one possible solution is to replace it from with the bcom patch in my opinion that's the ideal solution random pal has gone out of their way to provide that to work with their opus of a mod and uh, so we should we should use that so that's what i'm gonna do okay Ooh, you know what? This is going to be a naturalized. Yeah, okay. It's coming back to me now. All right. Um, excuse me. I'm not quite sure what Gonzo meant by number 54 here. Maybe he meant 54 in the list, maybe. Anyways. Naturalized. <clears throat> Patches, okay. So we need to add area effect arrows to this. All right, we can do that. go to the date. It's naturalized. Let's get this all queued up here so we can look at what I did. what Gonzo meant exactly here by 54 test runner yeah I don't think that's related <clears throat> might have been a mistake no biggie we'll chat with Gonzo about that later Uh, okay, um, so the question then is, do I already have a, a listing, you know, for this one on the website? Or do I have to add one? I think I have to add one. Patches. Let's find out. No, 
No, I do not. All right. So we edit. And uh, let's let's just pull it up here in my collection. Beautiful cities of Morrowind. Patches. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, we are in the patches file. to these yeah need now a data path path order oh all right Oh me, oh my. Broke the file too much for my editor. Didn't like it. It's what I do. All right. <clears throat> well. Did it again. Did it again. Ooh. I'm quoting all strings. Why are you quoting everything? I'm, I'm just doing it. Maybe. Just maybe. You're wondering, Johnny, why are you so paranoid about quoting all strings in a YAML document? Oops. And I think maybe you haven't seen this before. Just do a search for this one and read, and you'll see. Maybe you will then be like me, and you'll want to be extra careful. All right. So, so let's get back on target here. 
added the patch, okay. It's naturalized. And so really we just stick this one in here then. And then we're going to have to do some CFG generator shenanigans to make sure people get the right thing. Right? Make sure everybody gets the right thing. And there we go. It's fixed in the lists. All right. Not exactly sure how I fixed this before, which sort of hack I used. Gotta refresh my memory here. Hmm. It doesn't appear to be here. Here we go. There you have it. That should be enough, and we'll test it. Let's summarize our hacks collection here. You know what? Ah, uh, you know what? Let's. Time for a quick breather. This Dwemer Ruin track from the TR soundtrack, by the way, giving me some Diablo 2 vibes, for sure. No, I don't play new Diablo games. I'm still on Diablo 2. Hurry up, website! Let's go back to the list. Excuse me. So close. So, so close. All right. Still got to put a change log in for the mod lists. But we're at a place here where I can look at what I did. All right. How to view the change is the question.
This is looking good to me. Also looking good to me. Okay, so that's not what we want. Area effect, arrows naturalized. what we expect. Clearly, these work. right here I'm a little flummoxed <clears throat> arrows naturalized spelled right supposedly it changed Didn't pick it up again, though. <laughs> I have to use the restroom. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back.
I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Should be false in these cases, right? But what about this one? <sighs> All right. How about this? How about this? This is really bugging me. That's it. All right. Put it back in there. Excuse me. This is going to be noisy. Here we go. Boom. I need to see it, though. Area. It's just simply not in the plugin. Uh, there's some other shenanigans going on here. It's just not in here. But it is. Because <laughs> we're getting it in the result. Yeah. Must be hacks on top. I blame hacks on top of hacks. There's some other hack here that we're colliding with. Has to be something like that. All right. Now to restore my sanity. Area. Not in here. It's not happening. Okay. Not in here. Not happening. This is a mystery. <laughs> Not here either. <sighs> well, I really don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Um, natural. That's not, not happening here anywhere. Forms naturalize. It's only happening right here. There appears to be no other special handling with this junk. And yet I've done something. Something is not obvious to me what. Putting it back in there. That's where it should go. It's getting filtered out before it even gets here. go. 
como no es. Oh, you know what? I left my other spam in here. Too much spam. One helping of spam at a time, please. Nice. Not exactly how I wanted it. Hold on. Or mod in plugin mods grant mod. <laughs> Nothing wrong with one lining that. Python, come on. Python black. plugins naturalized. There it is. So Is a gnarly one-liner. Here we go. Will it give me what I want? We're querying plugin mods for this one, and we're getting specifically the plugins. We're drilling deep here. There it is. Area effect arrows naturalized number eighty-eight. So as of right here, we still have it. Let's move on. All right. Yeah. had a thought more hackiness causing problems let's see okay plug in dict okay I want to be looking at this right now <clears throat> let's just print it raw if you're not familiar a dict in Python a dictionary is a key value item like this. This is a dict right here. And when I say key value, you have a record. This is one record, like a spreadsheet, kind of. This is the key, 564. This is the value, ghost fence ESP, key value. All right. Oh boy. That's good, though. That's good. Realized. And you can see it's in there. Here we go. I highlighted it. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. For thing and plugin dict. For plugin in thing. We definitely have it here, so I'm just mystified. Truly mystified. Maybe I subtly typoed it in some way. I don't know, that's the best I got right now, theory wise. And 
And then that bring that really just brings us back to here. Whoops. Don't know if... Oh, yeah, there we go. Don't know if we're going to work this one out, folks. Today. We'll figure it out. Just not today. This is this is spicy. I don't know. Cuz what the, you know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm wondering, and I don't, okay, and it's nothing, okay. You know, for whatever reason, our number 88 here is being picked out, and that is a clue, I think. I have done something hacky somewhere that has resulted in this, I'm sure of it. Grasping at straws here, really just looking if I hard coded 88 somewhere. Not sure what all this nonsense is. Probably some obfuscated JavaScript if I had to get OS vector graphic, okay. I just feel like I gotta have popped the 88th key under some assumption at a previous point in the past. Something dumb like that. It doesn't look like it, though. Quick scan at my code doesn't look like it. <clears throat> yeah. There are definitely a couple places in the code where I pop out specific indexes. Yeah, right here. But I don't appear to be touching the index for this. So where does it go? <laughs> where does it go? We got a distinct gap right here. 87 to 89. Somehow it still ends up in the output though. I need food. Well, going to leave it at that today. Um, I've done most of the work of swapping this in, but I really want to make sure the config generator is good. Was not anticipating a mystery afoot. Uh, I'm going to continue working on uh, this, TOTSP, better, RR Better Ships patch. 
may be specific to the BCOM one. I found that the dupes returned when I switched between them. So some of my other patches where they have BCOM options don't necessarily care. <clears throat> this one seems to care, unfortunately. So <clears throat> if all goes well today or tomorrow, we're going to wrap up 5.7. Actually push that update out there. I still need to sort the plugins. Um and make sure that's all good. But yeah, I, th I feel really great about today looking at the uh, Magic Base skill progression, Lua Mod. It looks fantastic. I'm excited to try it out. I think we squashed this bug about lu uh, luck growth changes. I really do believe it's, squa it's squashed. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, off stream. We'll get some work done on this. Maybe I'll carry over into tomorrow. We'll be drilling into it some more. Who knows? Um, Thank you for watching, as always, and happy modding. Cheers to you all out there.